in TV land. It's your boy Freelancer Joe and it is once again time of the week for Drinks with Joe. Yes, yes, the time of the week when uh, we take a look back on the last past couple, past few days uh, and do a retrospective. Think about what went right, what went wrong, what we want to keep doing and what maybe we should stop doing or change differently. Because if you want to get to a certain destination, it helps to pay attention to where you've been. Now, if you'll excuse me, I will go ahead and pour myself said drink. Uh, it is technically in the PM, so I don't feel guilty at all about having this drink. And I hope that you're pouring yourself a drink too while we're at it. Uh, doesn't have to be an adult beverage. Uh, after all, I mean, adult beverages aren't for everybody. That's perfectly fine. And, uh,. Even for myself, in, you know, in moderation, it's okay. Um, but how y'all doing? Good, fantastic, wonderful, fine. This is a, uh, a holiday weekend. Martin Luther King Day coming up on Monday. So my understanding is there's gonna be lots of people traveling, so if you're out driving, I hope you be safe. This is interesting, this is gonna be LaCroix Lime, the least popular LaCroix flavor. But it should work well with a vodka, I think. So, I'll see how it goes. But yes, holiday travel. So again, hope you're staying safe if you're traveling, or even if you're not traveling, you're just uh, going out and doing your daily thing. I mean, sometimes the travelers aren't exactly paying the best attention, or the normal people get flustered because of all the travelers, so. I don't know. I'm trying to, uh, it doesn't look like the lighting is any different. That, that's good. I. Uh, well, if the lighting isn't any different, then I really don't have to explain to you why I'm talking about that. Ah, well, I'll go ahead and talk about it. So, uh... Actually, that is a pretty good combination. That may be a reason to keep Lime and LaCroix handy. Uh, so when I moved in the apartment, they had the old filament-style light bulbs. And, of course, you know, eventually they go out. And I upgraded them as they went out to various LED, or to a batch of LEDs that I had bought. And I like the LEDs because they had the same hue and of course they were energy efficient and all that. The only catch to them were, was that they were too big for um, the encasements that go around the light fixtures, they, like the glass bubbles. <clears throat> so basically I ended up just you know, putting the glass bubbles in storage and just having the light bulbs there which doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm a bachelor, single guy, living in an apartment by himself, so I mean, what do I care? I mean, lots of my furniture are just storage boxes, so hey, storage boxes and crates. Um, but then I had bought another batch of LEDs, which I thought were the same ones. I hadn't opened the box until, uh, I want to say yesterday, when I noted that one of the remaining, few remaining filament light bulbs burnt out. And I put it in, I was like, oh, this is a different bulb. Not only is it a different bulb, well, it's a different bulb. And it's smaller, but it's got that white hue, kind of like the office things. Uh, which I'm less concerned about, because the fact that it was smaller meant that I actually could fit the light fixtures, or the bubbles, back up. So, I took out all of the other LED bulbs, replaced them all with these smaller ones, and now, um, uh, what do I do with the older LED bulbs? Well, there are a couple of light fixtures that actually, uh, like cane ones, that have the bubble go down around it, so I can just go ahead and use those. So I'll just use the LEDs on those, provided when they eventually go out, but again, these are LED bulbs, so it could be years before that happens. But I was just wondering if the different hue kind of made things look different, but apparently it doesn't. Hmm. Anyway, so we're talking about the holiday weekend. Uh, I guess I should have asked first if you had any plans. I mean, I just talked about traveling, so I assume some people are traveling. Uh, but I assume a good number of people are actually just going to stay home and relax and enjoy themselves, which is good and nice. I personally was actually thinking about watching uh, season two of Punisher on Netflix, maybe binging that. I'm still not entirely sure about that though. There are things that I need to, do, or should, right now there, there are things that I should do. Eventually they'll become things that I need to do. That's usually how these things go. Uh, so, I don't know if necessarily getting into uh, the binge phase is the best idea for me. 
Uh, and, although, considering it's just this season of Punisher, and then one more season of Jessica Jones, I think, and then that's it for the Marvel series on Netflix. So, I mean, I'm going to watch it eventually at some point. Uh, so, either now or later, uh, we'll see. Although, it does raise an interesting question about uh, my Netflix subscription in general. I mean, with the cancellation of Marvel, the Marvel series, uh, is there much of a point for me to continue having it? So, when I, I first subscribed to Netflix, because uh, just a few years after moving out on my own, I, saw, I stopped, uh, stopped getting cable. Uh, yeah. I wasn't home that often, and you know, the thing with cable is that you, know, you get home, sure you have all the channels, but it kind of depends on what's on at the time. And streaming just seemed like a better option at the, better option. But since streaming was still pretty young, you couldn't always find what you wanted. Um, but now, and well, and back then, you know, Netflix had a, not necessarily an awesome selection, just like it doesn't have an awesome selection now. But uh, it had a varied enough selection that you had something to watch when you wanted to watch it. Uh, and plus, yeah, so basically back then, you know, when something was new or old, I mean, you couldn't always find it. But nowadays, if it is new or old, you can find it. New releases, the studios have their own services, you can get them from Amazon uh, or Voodoo or whatever. Um, uh, the iTunes store and uh, even the old stuff now older things you can find really easily so All that really leaves on Netflix are exclusives, which is their original programming and uh, So aside from the Marvel things uh, I watched some anime series on Netflix and, and there are some good ones to be sure but again, those are the sorts of things that uh, you can find online anyway. I mean, what is it, Funimation? Yeah, Funimation I think is a big r publisher in the U.S. for Japanese series, and uh, they offer their stuff via streaming. The, the trick with animation is simply you're not really sure just how good it is until you start watching it. That was kind of the cool thing about Netflix, you know, what, if it had a series, you could watch the series. And if it was good, then you could go out and buy it, like I did. Uh, that's how I got into uh, Naruto and Bleach and... What was the most recent one? A oh, One Punch Man, which is great. But other than that, the only other thing on Marvel, the only original programming I watched on Netflix was, uh, was Voltron. And, but now that's done, so... I mean, I really do wonder. Okay, no, wait, so there was One Punch Man and The Devil is a Part-Timer. That was pretty good, too. And Seven Deadly Sins is good, too, and I think Kudo, 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 I keep, I can't figure out if I pronounce that right. A Serious The Jaeger, eh, that was so good. Oh, but anyway, so Voltron. Like I said, it's done, and I don't think I ever gave my complete review of it. Uh... So, what I want to say is that, while it never reached the heights of Avatar The Last Airbender, which is unfortunate since it was from a lot of the same minds that did Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, but it was still solid and enjoyable. It got a little choppy in, I want to say, the middle seasons. I don't know what happened there. They may have had like some scheduling issues or whatever, so it got a little messed up. Um, and then, I gotta admit, I was a little disappointed how Zarkon went out. He never really reached his full potential. You see, when he came on the scene, I was like, oh man, that guy is awesome because he's like a combination of Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender and Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender, which is a great combination. Um, but, uh, that said, I could still kind of, it was still pretty good until the ending. Now, I get that they were going for a bittersweet ending, and, you know, given time, I might have grown to appreciate it. Bittersweet ending is always kind of difficult to swallow, obviously. But, uh, then they went full Avatar Legend of Korra at the very, very end. I mean, we're talking like the last 
10 seconds. Now the thing is, they started to veer in that direction, like I'm gonna say sometime in the last season, um, but it disappeared. I don't know, necessarily midpoint or three quarters of the way through, and then the last season had a really awesome ending, and then that whole vibe was missing from most of, well, pretty much this entire last season until the very end. And um, so was it, it wasn't enough to destroy the entire series for me. It had generated too much goodwill. I mean, you had the nostalgia factor, you had the style factor, you had, because again, same studio, same guys that did Avatar. So the look was good, the sound was good, the story overall was good. I mean, it created a lot of goodwill. And even though they kind of chipped away at it with the uneven middle series, uh, middle seasons, and uh, that Legend of Korra vibe at the end of the last season, I mean, they really destroyed a lot of the goodwill uh, at the very end of this last season. Again, not enough to ruin the entire series for me, but enough to destroy any goodwill I had at accepting the ending eventually. See, if it had, if it had, like, uh, a solid, good, happy ending, and then they did this thing, basically all I would do is when I'm watching it, I would stop like 10 seconds before it was uh, it was done. But because they had that bittersweet ending, I mean, I'm not, it, there's no goodwill left for me to do that. So, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. Basically, I mean, this was a kid's show, or it, what, yeah, it was a kid's show originally, and then this is the reimagined one, but I really can't advise it for kids, to be honest. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, because most of it's pretty good. So, oh well. And, to be honest, going back to my whole question about the Netflix subscription, a lot of their program now seems to be going into Legend of Korra territory. Uh, everything they feature and put up there really really seems to be going that way so I mean I'm not the market demographic for that so why am I paying them like 19 bucks a month I don't know. You know, if I wanted to watch something I, I could just rent it from Amazon Prime for like you know four or five bucks or I could just buy it uh, for anywhere from like 10 to 20 so it does does really make me question that whole thing. I, actually, I'll tell you the real reason I haven't, well, probably the only thing that makes me really hesitant to cut it is the fact that I still have one of their DVDs. <laughs> I have a DVD. I never actually watched it. This is back when I first got Netflix, and this is when they first started doing their streaming. So, but I had to get the DVD. So I got the DVD, and I have no idea where it is. <laughs> I really don't, so. I mean, eh, I just swallow, swallow it, cut the subscription, and pay the price for the DVD. So that's that. Ugh, but it's so much of a hassle. Mm. But then again, I mean, twenty bucks a month—that's a sizable chunk of change. So I probably should. I, I might give them um, a few months to see what other programming they come up with. Definitely when they lose the Disney stuff. I mean, that's a big chunk of the library right now that I find interesting. But it's also uh, the part of the library that I mostly already own. So, I don't know. Uh, oh, but we are about at the 15 minute mark, so I'm going to cut for intermission. I've already picked out the meme before, and I think it's too sweet, too sweet. But I shall see you in 10 seconds, and I'll have another sip of this. Be right back. And we are back. I certainly hope you like that meme. <clears throat> uh, it was uh, there was an actual inspiration for that. So, based on my new schedule, work schedule, I've been less connected with the events of the outside world than I normally am or used to be. But um, every now and then I see headlines, and uh, I've seen that there are some rising uh, new stars in the political world. 
And after just taking a simple cursory look at what they espouse, now whenever I see them, or those who support them, that meme is what pops into my head. And as often as I'm amazed by human ingenuity and the accomplishments that humanity has done, more often than not, I'm just amazed by their rampant stupidity. Uh, excuse me for a second while I uh, swap DVDs. I'm still ripping stuff, and even though I said I had moved on the Blu-rays, there are actually still quite a few DVDs left. Um, but yeah, so the uh, rampant stupidity of humanity just... <sighs> never ceases to amaze me. I want to say it doesn't surprise me, and it does. But, um, you know, that sort of thing just reminds me of something that uh, Heinlein said. And let me go ahead and read the quote, so I can sound smarter than I actually am. Uh, Throughout history, poverty is the normal condition of man. Advances which permit this norm to be exceeded, here and there, now and then, are the work of an extremely small minority, frequently despised, often condemned, and almost always opposed by all right-thinking people. Whenever this tiny minority is kept from creating, or, as sometimes happens, is driven out of a society, the people then slip back into abject poverty. This is known as bad luck by all the right-thinking people. You don't believe me? The historical record is quite replete with examples of it, and if you don't want to look at the history, just look at current events and Venezuela. But, again, rampant human stupidity. Uh, now, nah, well, now, nah, well. Anyway, I'm kind of, you know, I'm going along here when I really should be recapping the previous week's events, you know, doing what I should do instead of philosophizing and drinking. Although I do enjoy the drinking. And the philosophizing. And just chatting with you, my loyal and wonderful and awesome viewers. Uh, okay, so let's dig into it. We cover three things, uh, work, training, and my freelancer activities. So let's start off with work. Now overall it was good. Actually, I want to say it was excellent. Um, and more so because I went back to work after getting over my cold. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, you think I'd have a lot to go over since it's been like two weeks since the last Drinks with Joe episode. But that previous week, since I was out with the cold most of the time, there really wasn't much change of anything. So we'll just we'll just cover this week. Anyway, like I was saying, so work was good. Sort of, now it started out quiet because of the snow we had on. Was it Sunday? I think it was Sunday. Sunday into Monday, uh, and. Your boy Freelancer Joe likes quiet days at that. Okay, well. Now this looks like it's a lot, and it is actually a lot, but considering I've been working on this for like six months now, that's not bad. Anyway, it was quiet at the office, and I like those quiet days. I can be very productive. I don't have to wear the headphones to a, one, not a not bother other people with the music I listen to, and two, not to block out other people talking. And uh, I'm actually hoping this Monday is going to be the same too, because um, the holiday. I'm almost certain my office mate is going to be out. He seemed to be planning a long weekend. And I'm going to go into work, because MLK is not one of those holidays that I generally bank on taking. Uh, let me see. Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas... New Year's and July 4th. Those are the holidays that I always say I'm going to take, regardless. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, for work itself, you know, the stuff that I actually get paid to do, I am better than I thought. Which is saying a lot, because I think an awful lot of myself. So my tasking, which I've been working on, and I'm still working on, very complicated, um, very complex. Uh, ideally, it would be something like uh, the equivalent of changing, um, uh, changing from like a white Lego brick in the structure to a yellow Lego brick. That's ideal, right? You just kind of 
pop some things off, take out the old piece, pop a new one, pop the new things back on. That's the ideal case. This, when I first started getting into it, I look like uh, it's definitely not that. It might actually be something similar to an organ transplant where you have to delicately detach nerves and blood vessels, take out the organ, put it in the new organ and reattach. But then when I really got into it, I realized, no, it's like replacing the entire cardiovascular or nervous system. I mean, it goes everywhere. It's a lot of small, tiny things. You know, tucking on one thing has an effect on something else. It's really difficult. Or really complicated, I should say. Uh, and so I wasn't really expecting that I would have anything to show until sometime in spring. But, because I am that good, I am that super good, I might have something before the end of the month. I impress even myself. I really do. Hmm. Or is that in the same vein as being constantly amazed by human stupidity? Hmm. Maybe, maybe. But I'll be optimistic and say just because I'm that good. Ah, uh, and then as for other parts of work, all right, I, I think I had talked before about a specific process that I was trying to start, and I've been trying to start it for over a year. And to be honest, it was one of the major reasons that I changed to this new project. Uh, but I had not heard, heard any news about that process. Mm, granted, it's only been a little over a month now. Uh, but my manager actually sat down to talk with me this week, and he uh, he said, yeah, he's about ready to go ahead and uh, poke some people to see if we can get this things going. Um, he, and he told me that the reason he waited was quite simply because uh, it is a little easier to get this process going or to get it approved by other people to get going if a person can demonstrate their... Uh, what is the word? Uh, not necessarily importance, value. If they can, uh, if a person has demonstrable, demonstrable value to a project or program. And uh, uh, even though I've only been there a month, I've certainly done my share of doing that because, again, I am that good. So my manager is about ready to poke and get that going, which is good. I'll still have to keep my eye on it though, and there's still many, many other hurdles. So many other hurdles, in fact, that I still have to have other options in, in the queue. Uh, uh, but that just about covers it for work. Uh, next week should be a quiet start, uh, and I'll continue be being as good as I am. And um, actually, I might even get that thing to show, not to you, but what I'm working on to show to the people I should show it to. Uh, might even have it done by the end of next week, which is like a whole week early. So that's good. All right, next, training. Actually, I'm gonna, I should probably change this just from training to like health overall. Health slash training, no, health overall. Uh, so overall, it's great. Um, weight loss was good for this week. Uh, as of this morning, I was only five pounds off of the low before I did my, uh, my uh, Christmas vacation, my last break off of training. Uh, and that, and to bear in mind that that low was after eight weeks of training and really pushing myself. So I'm quite happy. Plus when you consider in the fact that I was still recovering from the cold at the beginning of the week and uh, I didn't really resume my diet until Monday and I didn't really resume training until Monday. So that was good. And uh, despite being sick, the strength held up quite well. And no significant injury issues bother me too much. The lower back was a little sore this morning, a little stiff, um, and that was, unfortunately it wasn't more than just a little because I did take it a little easy on the deadlift yesterday. <clears throat> Instead of uh, going full bore, I did back off because I remember the last time I did it, it was, uh, I barely made it, finished it, and then I was, I was hurting on Saturday, I mean, really, really stiff, really, really sore, and then the back was bothering me all week. So, I'm almost over my illness. Waist looking good. Training's looking good. 
it's all solid. Although, I have come to the conclusion that I have a very specific allergic reaction to something that, uh, we may talk about it some other time, but we are at 10 minutes now, so I need to get into the freelancer stuff. Not that there's much to report on that. But for my freelancer activities, I mean, clearly I'm back to my regular content, for those of you who have been watching uh, my channel. And I know there are people there that watch... I hope that there are people there <laughs> that watch religiously and devoutly and re-watch episodes. Uh, but for those people that exist or just exist in my imagination, I am back to my regular content. Um, during the break, um, no, during my illness, I learned the importance of having those in the bank episodes, uh, always having something available to provide. And so I did record an additional five episodes. Uh, so that's good. Now, I never plan on being sick, and I don't plan on using those episodes. But it might still happen. So that's why we have them. and keep them in the bank. And then as for the episodes themselves, uh, the freelancer episodes, uh, I had been clearing up my technical debt for the existing things that I had, and we got that all done. And then I switched over to trying to configure the Webpack dev server to correctly deploy a style sheet. But as a result of those activities, I ended up just completely messing up my uh, pure template. Not the code itself, just the, just the uh, dependencies. And uh, I did do a rebuild, of, a full rebuild of that this morning, basically. I wiped the directory and reinstalled and redeploy and so it's back to where it was before I started messing around. Um, so you don't, you aren't going to be subjected to watching me run that install script again, especially on the slower internet connection. So hopefully tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow's Sunday. We'll be back in the freelancer stuff. So tomorrow, uh, we can pick right back up on that. Uh, then what is my plan for the rest of the week? Well, I'm hoping I have enough energy to kind of do some more research on that CSS stuff before I start recording the episode. And if so, then, you know, hopefully it'll just be a fix and then the episodes will be me applying that. Uh, if not, then we're going to spend the episodes watching me just kind of do the shotgun approach and throwing various things at the wall to see what see what if anything sticks uh, that should probably if I find the solution I mean it all depends on how quickly I find the solution it could take me the entire week I might not even finish it by the end of the week on the other hand if I find the solution tomorrow before I start recording it'll only take like a day or two two or three days I guess to get the rest of it deployed or the rest of the projects updated to include it so, okay, well, so we'll, uh, that'll be the plan for next week, at least as far as my episodes go. And if I finish early, then I'll start looking at the AWS Amplify stuff. But as far as seeking out actual freelancer gigs, nothing. I got nothing to report on that. Uh, to be fair, the cool did derail me. I had been saying I really need to push myself to start looking for those things. And then I had the cold, which did derail me. Um... So, but now that I'm back, you'd think I could go into that again, but now I have to start prepping for the disruption. I've been mentioning, or I've been mentioning the potential disruption to my content, and uh, the, mm -hmm. I'm not going to call it a disruption so far as there might have to be a slight deviation from the norm as far as my content goes. Um, I'll go into details about that sooner or later, um, but in the meantime, I have to be preparing myself for that particular event that will cause the deviations. And uh, until then, again, I can't commit to getting any, doing any freelancer gigs, so I really shouldn't look for freelancer gigs. Um, but yeah, and we are at the 15 minute mark, which is, since it's a part two, that's 30 minutes, so I'll wrap it up for now. Cool kid words about liking and subscribing, commenting and suggesting. I certainly enjoyed having these drinks with you. And I certainly hope you enjoyed having these drinks with me. 
Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the Saturday afternoon and a wonderful weekend. I hope you join me tomorrow when we go back into some freelancer stuff. And until the next time you join me, I hope that you take care and God bless.